Hi everybody, good morning, it's Chris here. Welcome back to the World Cup Daily Spreadsheet Show. This is day 12. Can you believe we've done 12 consecutive days? But we've got another action-packed show. We're going to have Ian's uh, insights, uh, Ian's take on today's fixtures. We're going to have some Excel analysis. We're going to look at some graphical analysis in Excel. So putting together those all-important charts, it's going to be fun. Good morning, Ian. Morning, morning, everybody. Um, a few happy Aussies in. The down under friends will be happy today. Chris, um, are you well? well you yeah, good? I'm okay. Yeah, yeah, I'm good. My voice is going a bit, as you can hear. Yeah, but, but no, but, but lo loving awesome. the show. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Do you want to do your? Let's just do the hellos, and then we'll get into. Um, yeah, absolutely. Let's yesterday's. go. Yeah, good morning, Chris. Chris Connop's with us. Don't think I've seen you before live, Chris. So good morning to you. Thanks for joining us live. Dave is with us, uh, tuning in from Bradford. Not raining yet. It's chilly, isn't it? Now it's really getting cold. Uh, Roger, big welcome to you from Birmingham. Dean, tuning in. Welcome, Dean. CG, tuning in from the East Midlands. Not too far from me, maybe CG. How you doing? Mark, tuning in. Um, what so what cricket is on at the moment, Mark? I'm not really up with my cricket. Is it Australia, Pakistan? Actually, I think it is in the test match. Roger tuning in, how are you doing? Uh, how's it going? Barry Stewart, uh, Paul tuning in from down under, of course. Anish is with us, how are you doing? Arnie, uh, Rodney, how's it going? Good to see you. Michael tuning in from Spain. Uh, Lee Wilson with us as well. Yeah, a few sore heads amongst our Australian friends. Fantastic stuff. Stip is tuning in. And yeah, that's everybody so far uh, in the chat. So yeah, a uh, big welcome to the show. Uh, as always, let me just go through our um, uh, parish notices here. This is what we're trying to do. This is what we're trying to do on the World Cup Daily Spreadsheet Show. If you're watching for the first time, you're watching on replay, a big welcome to you. Yeah, we're going to hang out every day uh, during the World Cup. Every day there's fixtures. Uh, we're going to be streaming at 9 o'clock uh, UK time. You get Ian's insights. Uh, you can access the data set. I'll talk about that in a second. Improve your data analysis skills. Get, get some Excel tips and tricks. And put your questions to, to us, of course. So the data file has been updated uh, since yesterday and is available in the link in the video description below. So you can go ahead, download it. You'll actually find every file with you. So if there's a particular analysis you're interested in from a particular day, uh, you can find them. They're numbered, you know, World Cup Show 1, World Cup Show 2. Um, yeah, and if you sign up for this, you'll get a promotional email about XL VBA for football traders. And if you're enjoying these stream guys, you will love our unique Excel VBA learning community. We've got all our resources organized into video series aimed at um, a particular task that people working with football data undertake. For example, uh, creating a, a heat map, not, not dissimilar to what we did yesterday. Uh, you've got a library of videos in there, all organized, ready for you to work through them. Uh, the link is in the video description below. We're currently running our World Cup promo offer. It's been great to see people coming in taking advantage of the offer and locking in a discounted rate for life. It's just a monthly fee, roll on, roll off any time, uh, no ongoing contract. So, yeah, if you're enjoying the uh, spreadsheet stuff, then definitely uh, go ahead and check that out. And just uh, uh, disclaimers, uh, two disclaimers. Firstly, on the show, we're not encouraging you to bet. Uh, we're encouraging you to, you know, to get into Excel. And, um, yeah, we're not endorsing the location of this tournament. You can read those disclaimers in the video description. Uh, below. So uh, with that said, Ian, let's get into today's uh, fixtures. No, sorry, I'm, yesterday's I'm, fixtures. Yeah, I'm just fixing a, um, <coughs> keep talking, Chris, I'm just fixing an issue. Okay. Currently, the email I sent has got a dodgy link in it, so I'm just fixing it. So keep Okey yourself, dokey. Keep yourself yep. going. Oh, no, oh, yep. actually, no, I've got to come back to you. You've put the same link in. I've done the right thing. You, where you've updated my document, you put the same link twice. Oh no! Live okay. TV, guys. Live TV. See. Should I go and grab the grab the link now? If you can drop it to me. Yeah. Um, drop it in the yep. doc, drop it on that document. Put my screen up. I'll talk to them. You fix the link. Okay. Okay. Yeah, okay. So we're live, guys. There you go. Can't get live the telly. <clears throat> he might be good at Excel. He's rubbish at Word. <laughs> Seriously. Um, Right, yes. Good morning to our Aussie friends. I think it's all about you guys. Um, yesterday, um, I mean, all I've heard is that um, Denmark were awful, but take nothing away for the Aussies to get through. Um, we've got some Danish 
members of FTS who uh, were most put out by the Denmark performance, worst in 25 years and things. But the Aussie goal I saw on Twitter this morning looked really good. I saw the scenes from Melbourne at 3.15 in the morning. Um, fantastic to see. My sister lives just outside Melbourne in Mount Eliza. Um, yeah, and, and probably the first sort of semi-shock that the Danes didn't get through the um, group stages, particularly having had such um, a strong qualifying campaign, getting Ericsson back would have been a boost. Um, and then Tunisia beat France and a bit of drama, a bit of betting drama there because France scored in the 95th minute uh, or 96, 97, the Griezmann scored an equaliser. Um, I don't know what happened, but Betfair closed the market, paid everybody out, and then the goal got chalked mm. off. Um, and there was a message from Betfair saying they're having a reset. Also, there's probably some people who nick their winnings out quickly. Um, so, yeah, France, I mean, good news for England. We're likely to meet France. At, um, I know it's a mix-up. You know, they've messed the team up a little bit, but... Um, I'm a great one momentum in these things. I'm starting to, I'm, Chrissy, I'm starting to believe we might go <clears throat> a little bit further than we think. It's coming home. You know, well, I don't believe that for a minute, but we might go a little bit further than we think. I mean, this, the, the setup looks good. Um, Argentina beat Poland 2 0, and I thought they would, but the, the game in that was Saudi Arabia, Mexico won. Without doubt, not having anything else, we saw. I saw it again on Twitter this morning. The best free kick that has ever been scored in football. Just watch the Mexico free kick. It is the best free kick that's ever been scored on a football pitch. Uh, and that's, that's. I mean, the only one that rivals it was Gazza's against Arsenal, 18. Um, but this free kick yesterday is unbelievable. The speed it goes in, the speed and distance, dip, shape, everything. But uh, Mexico were 2-0 up. I doubted them yesterday. 2-0 up, going through, Poland were out, and then Saudi Arabia scored in the 95th minute, not to get Saudis through, but to knock Mexico out and put Poland through. Um, and Poland will go into our half of the draw. Um, incredible. Incredible scenes. Um, Mexicans on their knees, but hell of a free kick. So Argentina ended up obviously losing the Saudi, top the group. I am getting even more convinced that they're the winners. I think they're just going to go from strength to strength, um, Argentina. They are still my pick for the tournament. Um, yeah, so that was just a but well done. Well done to the Aussies. Well done to the RGs. Well done to um, uh, Poland as well for getting through. I mean, they'll be, they'll be tough to beat Poland, but um, I'd rather Mexico went through. But there we go. Right. Have I got a link now? Yeah, I just dropped in our planning document. Yeah, right. Let's watch this now. Then I've just got to do that. Right, you need to talk now. You need yep. to entertain the I'll, troops. I'll fill. I'll fill. Sure. I'll, I'll give a little a little preview of what we're doing today. So, if you're following us on Twitter, uh, you might have seen this um, little tweet we put up the other day, and it's based on our late gold analysis, which we did two shows ago. And it looks something like this. So, it's a nice visualization and in this case we this this is a visualization of our late goals uh, analysis which we've do, been doing the last two shows so today uh coming up we're going to look at how to create a chart yeah it's something that looks easy in excel but you always get in a mess if you're anything like me you always get in a mess and over the years i've just developed a few tips and tricks a few shortcuts for, for creating a chart and then making it look good as well um, so that's what we're going to look at, guys. So after Ian's analysis of today's fixtures, uh, we're going to take yesterday's analysis. So people seem to be loving the data tables, those little optimization tables that we did yesterday. Um, but we can do so much more with them by layering a chart on top. And, and that chart can really tell the story uh, of the data. So that's what we're going to do. That's what we're going to do once um, uh, Ian's done his analysis of today's fixtures. No links gone, Chris. No links gone. There you go. Amazing. I think that was totally smooth. I don't think anybody yeah. would have noticed. I don't, I don't, nobody, nobody would have even noticed. Not a person. <laughs> oh, got some big fixtures there. Croatia, Belgium. That sounds like an absolute banger. Technical mm. term. I mean, that is the that is the the game of the day, obviously. Um, and we'll get to that in a minute. Canada, Morocco, Germany. You'd expect to beat Costa Rica and Spain. I mean, Spain, Japan's potential upset, but Spain really should um, 
have done the job against Germany and been sitting there with six points and through. Um, but if we um, if we get my screen up, yep. there's actually not a massive amount on the betting front. So we've now we're on 40 games, we've only got eight group games to go. We're now down to after yesterday's shambolic first half performances, 0.75 first half goals per game. I mean, it okay. is absolutely desperate. Um, coming up, but coming alive a bit in the second half. I mean, this was 2010, which was the next worst, but when you sort of look at 2014 over a goal again in the first half 2018 you know it's just oh missed the click 2018 was one absolutely desperate first half these games are taking a while to get going um with eight to go but it is today croatia belgium and you see now this is the power of elo that we've talked about there's not a massive amount on the betting front but 1945 to 1948 only three difference in those there now, when we started, I've got my start figures over here. Belgium were 2007 um, in, in ELO and Croatia were 1927. There was 80 between them and we've only played two games and that gap has come down to three. Um, mostly yeah. down to the fact that Belgium have been really lacklustre and lost to Morocco. So that's the difference. Now, the points have come off Belgium. Croatia obviously had the 4-1 win, got extra points for winning by three more three goals, goes up. So all of a sudden, two teams that were vastly apart just two weeks ago <coughs> are now sitting very close. And, and for the guys on FTS, it, of what you've got there, you've got a team trending up and a team trending down. And on our EMO ratings on the FTS sheet, that's something that I use. So you can watch these. If you if you takes a bit of legwork to go through, perhaps a sheet for Chris in the future to identify teams that are trending upwards, who are taking on teams who are trending downwards, um, mm. you can find some cracking value in that. You've got to say, I mean, there's nothing nothing really in the figures. It's one point five seven for a first half goal uh, to one point five two. Um, the win odds, 2.24. You could say there's value in Croatia, 47 games, 21 wins. You've got to say Croatia have got the momentum. There seems to be some real discourse in the Belgium camp since Kevin De Bruyne said they're too old to win it. Um, and he doesn't seem to have turned up. And um, I think the players mm -hmm. like Batongan took umbrage at that. Um, I, was, I was quite strong that Belgium might have a decent tournament before it started. But given what's gone on, You've got to say today that Croatia, if I was going to plump anywhere, I'd go Croatia, but I've got nothing on the betting front. Um, <clears throat> because Belgium have got some talented players and could turn up. Mm. One of the biggest, I think one of the biggest disappointments for Belgian football is Edin Hazard since he left Chelsea. Mm. Um, you know, he's had some injuries, but he, I read somewhere, he said, they said he looks about two stone overweight now. Yeah. Um, well, he was no, good player. No, no longer the best footballer in his immediate family as well. Yeah, that's right. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. His brother's good player. No, exactly. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think that's the the standout game and and an opinion. No betting an opinion. I think Croatia are going to have enough to get through. I think they're wily enough with the older players. I, I wasn't strong on them, but I've reversed my opinion. I think Croatia are going to go through. Um, and then you've got Canada versus Morocco. Morocco a fantastic win against Belgium. To be fair, two nil, um, irrespective of how Belgium are playing. Um, we put the numbers in again. There's nothing coming up numbers wise on these games today, um, which is not a bad thing. Mark Pillar asked about how you know the first half goals sometimes sitting on your hands. See 1.58, 1.58, we're bang on 2.3 for over two and a half. You go down and we are 2.28. So the numbers almost bang on for this game. Um, Morocco 1.91, Canada 4.8. Is there a little bit of value in? in Canada, maybe. Um, people have I've not watched again. Advantage watching. Are are they playing well, Canada? Um, but I think Morocco again, given that performance against Belgium, proving really hard to beat, um, could well be through. So I think Croatia and Morocco go through in that group. Mm -hmm. This lot should be out. Odds of 1.12. Um, I can't remember. I think Argentina or 1.12 to Saudi Arabia, but this is the lowest odds of the. Uh, sorry, here lowest odds of the um, of the day. Germany to beat Costa Rica. Costa Rica obviously a good performance. Nick the win against Japan. I said it after that day. I think this lot are going to be ruined. Um, not beating Costa Rica. Massive opportunity for them to put the Germans out. Germany are going to beat Costa Rica. Spain are going to beat Japan. 
there are no bets in any games, Chris. It is literally, there's nothing mm. coming up. Even if we put those ones in 151 to 200, there's just nothing of any value. I mean, I've been expecting the German game. Um, you know, 1.12 for over one and a half, 1.4. There's just nothing. The market thinks Germany's going to win and the market thinks Spain are going to win. So I've got nothing football bet wise. A day to sit on your hands and see. Um, can Costa Rica spring an upset from a sort of English fan's point of view, I guess? Um, but Croatia, Belgium is the game. Here's, here's, here's a question for you. So on this kind of day, as a football yeah. trader, where really the best thing to do is to do nothing. Um, have you ever struggled in your career uh, with that? Because I think a lot I, of people do struggle, I, don't they? I genuinely, and I mean this, genuinely haven't. Mm. Um, and I think that's from the way I went about it 14, 15 years ago. And some of the people I knew who did this, um, well, they bet on horses mostly, but same mentality. It is a massive thing for people. I get that. I mean, I just see chat rooms around this and people just can't help themselves having a bet. Um it's i get it it's a one-off tournament every four years it's a bit of fun i do this as a job it's just a day for me that i've got no interest whatsoever and and, and these guys probably don't want to hear that oh what can we have a bet on uh, mm -hmm. you know it is a sit on your hands and it is a discipline and you've got to learn it and that's the difference between doing it recreationally if you want to have a bit of fun which i'm not against if people want to do that or if you want to take it seriously you've got to know when to say no i'm not getting involved yeah and you're able to just switch off then? Do you just go and yeah, do something I else? Yeah, I, will, the I won't even, I probably won't even, I mean, I've followed the markets in the games I've had interest in. I probably won't even have the laptop on today until this evening when I put the results in. I'll just keep, I'll check my phone for the results, but I'm, I won't even have the computer on for that. Yeah. yeah. Good stuff. Good stuff. Very good. So um, any, any questions for Ian, guys? Um, get those questions in the chat. I've got my chat box uh, open here as usual. And shall we go over to the Excel stuff then, Ian? Yeah, crack on. Let's get some charts going. Okay, charty charties. Yeah, I mean, you, you do like like a chart, don't you, Ian? I mean, what, I think, what's yeah, the significance of a chart for you? Yeah. As I said yesterday, I think particularly for, again, for the guys who want to do this, if you look, a good example, this is a really good example of what we've done the last two days. Even, even people who are proficient at betting on Twitter were putting on about late goals um, at the start of this tournament. All the extra time, massive value to be had, massive opportunities. We're going to get load of late goals. You can take advantage of it. When it was going up, all that stuff, I was looking at it going, I just wouldn't be saying that. We're playing, we're talking a small sample size of 25, 30 yeah. games. We started on late goals two games ago. If you I don't know whether you can just um, get the get the input sheet up, Chris. Yep. Yep. If you can get the input sheet up, you've got the results on, and go to where you've added a late goal column. Uh, was there a late goal? No, but the other way. It's just after the goal times. Yep. yep. So I there. Right, so now you see, so all these people were saying late goals, late goals. If you go up, I think it's three in the last 12 games. So 25% yep. of those. So so all these people who go, oh, I've 12. spotted a trend yep. here. I've spotted a trend. Obviously, you've got to have 10 or 15 games of the World Cup to be played to see this trend appear that everybody talks about. Then you decide you're going to bet the trend and you've probably had four or five good results and you think, I've got the holy grail, I've done it here. And then you do your absolute nuts because there will be people who are doing this in every game. Oh, there's eight minutes of injury time doing their absolute nuts. They'll be cursing the France goal, getting chalked off yesterday, going, how unlucky am I? That was chalked off. What mm. graphs enable you to do is over a big sample size, see that these things actually in little spells mean absolutely nothing. You can see the visual up and down over decent sample sizes to say, yes, there's been a period of late goals. But was it purely just a run of randomness, how these things happen, or is there something in it? I was never convinced when these people were putting on Twitter that there was something in it. Uh, I wanted to see it play out, and we're seeing it play out now. We've gone down to 25% in the last 12 games. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know what the percentage is overall, but it's not, it's not what people were claiming it was going to be. Mm -hmm. so there you go and that that for me is grass particularly for the guys who are betting one of my biggest things with guys is getting them to stay in the game my 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 greatest attribute is staying in the game sitting on my hand staying in the game being patient mm -hmm. for these guys you know you say to them toss a coins 50 50 
call heads after eight times. If they've had eight tails, they're going to walk away. I've had enough of this. Irrespective of it, it has to turn around. Graphs enable you to see how things play out over time. I love yep. it. I, lo I love the visualisation, particularly when I'm trying to sort of teach people and coach people. Actually look what happens. You know, I don't win every oh. single day, every single month. Things just stand still. And then you have big peaks, little troughs, big peaks, little troughs. I'm just going to go for all the games in this tournament and just get that late goal. Uh, figure, oh, we do have two in some of these games, but it'll, it'll give us a sense. Yeah, so it's saying 23 uh, late goals in 40, 40 games so far. Yeah, but, and some of them have had two. Yep, yep, some of those yeah, have so had we're two. So we're probably, around, we're probably around 50% just under, which is trending yep. back to 41 to 45. What I said, it you know, yeah. it might end on 47, but people claiming, oh, jump on, there's a massive edge every game. Yeah. And there will be people who, that's why I, I never post betting advice on Twitter, because people jump yeah. on and do their nuts. Well, surely once it's got to the point where it's on Twitter, it's priced into the market anyway, isn't it? Well, exactly, that's exactly yeah, it. I mean, yeah. yeah, it just, um, it's, it's um, nonsense. Yeah. Okay, good stuff. So, um, yeah, let's try and create something like this. And I've created many charts for Ian uh, over the over the years. And you know, one point I would I would add, or just to underline what Ian is saying, is yeah, it allows us to understand trends uh, over time. So um, mm -hmm. yeah, here we're not dealing with time here. We're dealing with time in a game. But if you're talking about a trading strategy over a season or something. It's a great way to communicate that with a chart, a nice line chart, and we'll see bumps going going up and down, but hopefully, hopefully trending upwards. So, yeah, that's the, that's the kind of thing we do um, that I've done for you and over the years that I think has been has been uh, really helpful. But the first point, the first point with charts and the major mistake people make is is the data in the right layout. Yeah, how many times have we said that on the World Cup Daily Spreadsheet Show? You've got to spend the time preparing the data. A stitch in time saves nine. If the data is well prepared, wow. um, then the uh, the chart should be, if not straightforward, should be a lot easier to create. You know, uh, yeah, it can be tempting to just go and you know grab a column somewhere and like try to put it into a chart. That's going to get frustrating, and Excel is not going to understand uh, what you're trying to do. So it's all about getting the data into the right format. Now, some formulae or techniques for um, getting the data into the right format, the kind of stuff we've been doing, absolutely. Data table, 100%. We need our data in this tabulated format. Data table is a very useful precursor to a chart. Other things, the kind of stuff we've been doing, pivot table. Now, with a pivot table, won't do this today, but you have the option of a pivot chart. Yeah, if we, if we go over here, uh, you can hit pivot chart. I'm not going to do this now, but whatever's in the pivot table, Excel will try to chart that out. And yeah, if you're into pivot tables, you created a pivot table. It can be relatively routine uh, to create a chart from a pivot table. So that, that's another good option for chart creation. Uh, what other formulae and techniques will help you prepare data? Well, the stuff we've been looking at, our data analysis formula, you know, this data is definitely chartable. Yeah, because it's in a nice tabulated format and we've done our preparation using our data analysis formulae. Um, in this case, Countif. Another formula that we haven't touched on yet, if you're analyzing what we call continuous numerical data and just knowing a couple of words from statistics can really help. Uh, in statistics, we talk about different types of data. We talk about discrete data and continuous data, discrete data and continuous data. Now, discrete data means text or, for example, team names, or it means numbers where you've got a limited choice of numbers. Yeah. So, for example, if we're talking about goal minutes, uh, this would kind of sit between a clear definition for continuous and a clear definition for discrete. It's kind of between the two. But you could argue it's discrete data because there's a limited number of values that we're using. You know, it's only whole numbers between 75 and 90. Now, if we look at this data instead, what kind of data is this? Well, there's no limit really to the number of values we could have here. I could go and show you the decimal places and you can see these numbers, you know, they're, they're, they're really kind of precise numbers. So these numbers, it's not a limited range of values and it's not text. So this we'd call continuous. We'd call this continuous 
uh, numerical data. Now, if you're dealing with continuous numerical data, and I hope we'll do this one day on the World Cup Daily Spreadsheet Show, what formula do you need? Uh, you need the frequency formula, frequency. Frequency is going to take these numbers, uh, drop them into bins. You can set up the upper and lower bound for each bin, and that's going to allow you to analyze uh, continuous numerical data well. So you've got to go through this stage of preparing the data, whether that's data table, whether that's pivot table, whether that's data analysis formulae, whether that's the frequency formula, which is highly recommended when you're trying to create chart a chart, you've got to go through that process. Now, luckily, uh, we went through our process yesterday. Uh, we managed to get our data table. So let's see if we can create something like this. And let's give ourselves the additional challenge of, could we put these two lines on? So we managed to illustrate the difference between the group and the knockout in terms of the late goals. I found this really interesting. You know, I, I just thought in knockout matches, it's going to get desperate at the end. There's going to be goals flying in. But it's actually there's actually fewer late goals right in the in the knockout matches. So yeah, I just found that kind kind of interesting. Um, so yeah, can we create this chart with uh, two lines on it uh, rather than a single line? One line for knockout and one line for the for the group gains. Okay, this is this is our mission anyway. And yeah, can get a bit messy with charts. We'll see how we go. I managed to do this a couple of days ago, so um, hopefully we'll be able to do it. So. Data is prepared. What I recommend you do is, hmm, let's go across here. So I'm just holding down the shift key. Uh, so we could go control shift down and then just the shift key now and uh, the right arrow twice that. So pre-select your data. When you're creating a chart, you prepared your data. Great, it's in tabulated format. Pre-select your data. And then we're gonna go to insert and chart and we've got all of our chart options here now yeah it's good to have an idea what kind of chart is best yeah we've got a video on the youtube channel uh i can't remember the name of it now but it's about understanding which chart is the best for which data so here yeah the line chart the line chart looks good and wherever we're dealing with something over time and i said yeah here we're dealing with kind of micro time if you like it's the time within a match Wherever you've got the concept of something over time, a line chart is usually is usually the one to go for. Um, got some different presentational options here. We'll talk a bit more about the presentation later. So you can just go ahead and click the chart, and then yeah, it's <laughs> it's unlikely to work first time. Yeah, you'll get something like this, um, and then we've got to go in and like move things around, and then see if we can get things actually displaying properly. It's like this line looks about right, doesn't it? Oh, does it? Oh, okay. No, actually. Um, yeah, we need to get the need to get the minutes. Uh, okay, I'm not quite sure where it's got these numbers from. Zero to a hundred, and we've got like one to six here. Okay, right. Could take a while this one. Okay, so let's go into select data and let's try to understand uh, what's going on here. Okay, yeah, I think we've just got to delete this this blue line. So this blue line, I think, is messing everything up. So I'm going to go to these this series and then edit and try to understand um, which. So 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 this is in column J. Okay, yeah. So I think we just need to delete this series. Um, so if we delete series one, because the data in column J seems to be appearing in the chart here. Um, so we want that data in column J. We actually we actually want it along the along the X axis on the bottom here. Uh, so I'm just going to hit remove, and then OK. Yeah, and that and that gets us a bit closer. Yeah, a little bit closer. So that's an absolute typical process you'd have to go through with a chart. Pre-select your data, even if you've done your preparation. Excel isn't going to work it out straight away what you want. So you have to go in. So you right click, select data. And then try to understand, you know, what, what the hell is going on here. So by a series, Excel means some data that's plotted on the chart. Now, previously, we had three series. And what was, what was happening was Excel was treating the minutes as a series. So Excel was trying to plot the minutes on the chart as well. Uh, clearly, we didn't want that. So I was able to go in, uh, click on one of the series, click edit and then understand um, where is the data that's being charted in this series. You can see this is column K, uh, so that one's okay. 
So that's what you can do. You get into this select data dialog box and then try to understand which series is, is point, pointing to which data. And then you can do your edits, you know, delete or, or add, you know, whatever you need to do. And this is totally normal for charts, guys. I always have to go through uh, this process. Hmm. OK, yeah. Thank you, Dave, uh, for for pointing that out. Blue line is your minutes. Bjorn is tuning in. Had a bad day yesterday, Bjorn. Oh, not good. Is that in trading terms? Uh, Bjorn, ah, is, is it because of what happened to Denmark? I think it's in Denmark terms, yeah. Yeah. And Snips is saying, could we get a slightly more accurate implied odds on 90th minute going forward and onwards by using average of injury time played? Yeah. Intr what do you think about that, Ian? We could, yeah, I don't know if we can do this, guys, uh, during this series, but um, yeah. Is, is, one, is one, that of the problem, one of the problems with things like that, I can I put my betting hat on, is firstly, we, every game it's an unknown. What, what, how many minutes are going to be played at 90? Nobody knows until the board goes up. So you're trying to preempt what may happen. Yeah. Will it be 94? Might it be 95? But when you take any sort of averages like that in betting, let's say we took the 2022 games and we know some games have had 14 minutes of injury time and some have only had five, whatever it may be. So you add all those together and divide them and go, right, the average is 97. It still may be that all the games that had the late goals were the ones that had 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and you're now trying to factor them into a lower calculation. And it just becomes, and I've, I've done a video ages ago on averages in betting. It's something I get asked about with average odds, average minutes all the time. Uh, the bottom line is long term, it does not work uh, because averages is just taking a load of stuff and putting it together. And what you're trying to predict is what is going to outperform that average and what isn't. And it still becomes, particularly when you're dealing with an unknown, we don't know when the board's going to go up, what it's going to say, um, what it is. I think you've just got to have a solid, one, you've got to have a solid entry time. So for me, it would be like 18 minutes. And then you've got to have a solid model like this, where you would build and then go, that's it. The problem with World Cup, which comes on to Dan G's question above it, is... We're coming around every four years, different countries, completely different teams, and ultimately small data sets. Um, and that's what you're dealing with. And, and could you do Poisson? No, you couldn't really. You'd have to start using all the international games that they've played to get reasonable numbers. They all have different meaning. Do you start using Nations League games that don't mean anything? Um, you know, World Cup games. There's World Cup games are now. That, that game yesterday didn't mean much to France. Um, it's just a, these are really difficult tournaments to bet in, really difficult to, to, to have a solid method and go, that's it, that's what I want to do. Um, mm. You know, that's why the, I look at things like ELO and things. It's really difficult. The price on model that for the league fixtures, it doesn't get going until um, until like six weeks into the season, right? Exactly. And, and you've got that data. Uh, well, and the, the, the difference with the league model is, so Arsenal are top of the league. And when we are talking, and, and Poisson in effect is looking at averages, we're looking at, Let's take Arsenal, who are top of the league. I'll, so I'm not sure I'm not too bad. When you take the Arsenal, who are top of the league, Poisson is telling us how are Arsenal getting on, scoring and conceding against the rest of that league. And then it does the same for Man City, does the same for Tottenham, whoever it is. But they're all going to play each other. So Man City aren't going to play a different set of teams to Arsenal are playing. In this, you know, we've got a World Cup where England are going to meet Senegal, France, whatever, and they're going to go down the other side and play somebody where Argentina and Brazil have potentially met. Argentina meeting Brazil is a lot different than England meeting Senegal or Poland or wherever it turns out to be. Mm -hmm. So that's where it becomes really difficult in these these games. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe we need some kind of Fergie time, historic Fergie time analysis. Yeah. Uh, so injury time is different if you're at Old Trafford. I wonder if that's ever been... Um, has that been proven that when Manchester United were, were, were losing, they got more injury time? Who knows? Could no, they didn't good. get. It has been proven they didn't get more injury time. They did score more goals, but they scored more goals because okay. they were a better team, and they just kept going. That's, okay. You know, but everybody said when they did do it, if you're if you're a fan who can't stand Man United, and at that time they were so successful, everybody didn't like them. It's what we mm. do, isn't it? We've got to find. We've got to find a reason. We try and make reasons and bias to suit the narrative of what's going on. Roddy says, have you used uh, moving averages and analysis for goals or exponential moving averages? I mean, on the moving averages thing, we do analyse um, the last six games a, a lot, don't we? Yeah. So, so that, that average is kind of moving yeah. through it. It just, just yeah, I mean, I, I, run two, I, yeah. I don't do it that way. I have two Poisson models and one is short term and one is long term. Um, and obviously you, you either see it 
a similarity between the two or a mar mar massive disparity between the two, where all of a sudden, let's say Tottenham's expected goals is 2.2, but over the last six games, it's 3.4. You've just caught a spell where Tottenham are either letting a lot in or scoring a load of goals. doesn't happen very often. Now, I believe, Rodney, you might know more about this than me, but I believe an exponential moving average, I believe that weights more recent data points more heavily than yeah. the older. Is, is yeah. that right? Yep. Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Might be interesting. I don't know. Good. Yeah, yeah, good stuff. Right. So, um, yeah, back to the chart. So, yeah, yeah, it's kind of getting there, kind of. Uh, but what we can, what can we do to improve what I'd call the communicative power, the communi communicative power of the chart? How can we make it easy to understand and really uh, tell the story of what's going on here? So firstly, one thing to look at is your axes. Uh, so the y-axis looks okay. And a little tip here for the y-axis, and this is important, where you've got two lines that are kind of tracking each other and then they're close to each other, we want to make those differences more pronounced. Now, we could do that by controlling the axis range of the y-axis. For like This goes from zero, but clearly we're not going to ever going to have odds below one if we're talking about, if we're talking about decimal odds. Um, so if we could control that axis range, it would uh, make the range smaller and that would um, make the gap between the lines bigger. It would make it a bit, a bit easier to understand. Uh, so a tip for Excel charts is if you're having a problem with something in a chart, just click on it. So you can see I've clicked on the axis there. And then you go to format action for selection. So you selected something, format the, the top thing. But we're back. That will get you to the settings here. So you can see. For the axis limits or the bounds is the Excel word. Uh, usually they're, they're on auto. So Excel works out some appropriate limits according to your data. Uh, so you can override that. So we can go ahead and type one in there. And you can see uh, we're now going from one. We could even say, well, it's not going below 1.5. Uh, so you could go up to 1.5 there. And then at the top, well, it's not going above six. So we could go ahead and put six in there. And you see how now the lines are kind of using the space better. And it's just a little bit easier, particularly at the top here. It's a bit easier to understand the differences uh, between the lines there. So, so the axis range control, something to look at uh, with your charts. Uh, what about the x-axis? Well, the problem we've got with the x-axis here is Excel has just put some numbers in because Excel doesn't understand where the data is uh, for the x-axis. So we want our minutes uh, going in here. Um, so we do that by through the Select Data dialog box. So right-click, Select Data. Then we want our minutes going in. So horizontal category axis labels. Yeah, I've always found that difficult to understand. Maybe it's just me, but that means, yeah, that's your x-axis labels um, down at the bottom there. So. Uh, we can go ahead, uh, click on this range. Now, when you're doing this, you've got to make sure the range that you select is the same as the range in terms of the number of rows, is the same as the uh, range that's, that's that's being charted. So we're benefiting from clearly formatted data. I can see uh, this is the range that we want to include in the axis labels. So we can hit OK there. Yeah, and suddenly... We've got our axis uh, labels in there. So, 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 so that's pretty cool. Um, yeah, now the way we've set this up, if you wanted to look at some different minutes, we're going to see the power of a model working with a data table, working with a visualization. I can change the value in this. I'm going to go ahead and highlight it to emphasize the fact that it's, it's an input cell. So say we wanted to look just after half time, we can type in 45 here. Everything's going to update. Now, this, this is quite a good illustration, actually. Everything is going to update. We can't see the lines. Why can't we see the lines? Because I set the axis uh, to a particular value there. Mm. So we could set those back to auto, and we should be able to see the values. But if we go for 70, say, we should get some bigger numbers. Yeah, and we, we can see the lines there. So how about that for a nice, uh, easy analysis? Um, and I've put 80 back in. And yeah, because we're going too high there, that's not going to work. So I'm going to 75 and we're back to our original data. So you see that the power of the data table, those candidate values, we use the term candidate values to describe 
the numbers we want to put into the model, you know, we can change those and the data table is going to update and your visualization is going to update too. Pretty cool. Okay, so um, chart title. So what's a useful chart title here? We could say uh, late goals, uh, something like that. And then we'd want uh, to make this chart clear. We'd want probably some axis labels here. Um, so, for example, we could do that with an axis label at the bottom here uh, to tell us that this is gold minutes. I'm just going to do something else. Another trick I learned with charts. Um, charts, it's all about making use of space. If you want your charts to look really cool, slick, and a chart that somebody wants to engage with, then it's all about good use of space. It kind of annoys me. We've got the key or the legend at the bottom here that's taking up space. So what I do, I shuffle this over here, uh, the title, and then the series or the legend for our American friends, I'll put at the top there. Now that gives me a little more room um, to expand the chart down at the bottom here. You see that? So it's all about it's all about use of space, title in the top left. That makes sense to it, to me anyway, because Western people, they always start in the top left. Uh, so so you got the title there. So yeah, improving, I think. What about this? The series titles here, series two and series three. So the yellow one is going to be the knockout, isn't it? Because the yellow one starts with the higher numbers. The red one's going to be the group. Uh, so how do we get those in? So once again, select data, and then we want to edit the series. The series, remember, is just the data being charted. So series two is the group. Um, so I'm going to click on series two, click edit, and then the series name. You can type this in. I'd recommend using the cell because if you change that for whatever reason, it will then be reflected in the chart. Uh, so that's the group figures, and then series three. Go to edit and then the series name. So this is going to be the knockout, I think. Have I got those the right way, right way around? Then we can hit OK. So group starts with the smaller numbers and knockout start, starts with the bigger numbers there. Good. What, what do you think, Ian? Decent I chart? Like I, like, I never knew you could name it by clicking in the cell. I like that little yep. technique. I always type yep. the name in. That's for, that is good because if you do change anything, I like that. Yep. That's good. If yeah, you change nice. that, you'll see it. You'll see it reflected there. Yeah, that's a lovely little chart. That's, nice. like that. that's nice. Yeah. And just want to say, I mean, you've got the numbers on the right, obviously, but it just shows you, particularly, you know, up to sort of eighty-six minutes, the gulf between the two. As I say, visually, you just see it clear as day. The the implied odds for group games compared to knockout. So for all you guys who have done your brains in the last 12 games, who think you're going to get it back in the knockout stages, be very aware of the prices in column L and that chart there. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I just want to add an x-axis label because, you know, the uninitiated like me, might it might not be absolutely clear we're talking about gold minutes here. Um, so if you want to add something to the chart, uh, chart design, add chart element, axis titles. So we want a... Um, Horizontal axis title here. Going to need a little, little, little bit more room. And then I'll just take this down a little bit. There we go. Click on here. And then here we want... Oh, they lost it. There we go. We can go a uh, minute, something like that. And that's... Yeah. That, I think, is a nice, nice basic that's, chart. I think there. you want a left one as well. I think you want an yep. uh, odds implied axis title. Mm -hmm. Let's go ahead and put that on. Click, click the chart, and then chart design. Add chart element. Axis title. Vertical here. Then we have to bring the chart in. It's always a trade-off, you see. If we if we want the axis title, then we have a little bit less space for the chart. So, okay, I think we can justify it because we need it to help the user understand. Uh, so we could say implied odds here. I love this, Christian. This is good. Well done, son. Yeah. Like this one, there we go okay, not yeah, bad at good. all. Yeah, really good. Now, I'd now, now we're getting into the realms of subjectivity here, but I, I just like you can just format this area here. I, I like a nice, subtle shade on the back, maybe, maybe a light blue. You know, you can go and find the best, the, the best uh color for you there. Uh, but I'm just going to go for a green there that brings it out. Another thing I always do is uh, thinking about layering and making things stand out. Um, so if we go um, over here, let's put a 
border on the chart and then some cheeky, just a cheeky shadow, just a shadow like this. And suddenly we're going to see the chart, uh, you know, jumping out from the jumping out from the spreadsheet a little bit. Um, that, that's not too far away. Not too far away from me. That, there's one more thing I would do, which is you see, you see these lines. They don't they don't start at the beginning and, and they don't go to the end. Now, if you compare to my other chart, you can see the chart starts at the beginning and it goes to the end. So we've got a setting uh, to do that. Will I be able to remember? I think it's an, ax an X axis setting. So if we go to format, format selection, yeah, it's one of these. It's one of these. So if you just go on tick marks, then suddenly it just like lines everything up nicely, I think. No, I um, that either. That's good. Yeah, that seems to make things make things a little better. Now, clearly, you can spend ages like formatting a chart. For me, once you got to a point where you're like, that's nice and clear, that's good, then don't don't get too involved in it. But you do have some Excel gives you some options which 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 you might want to look at. And um, yeah, I quite like this one, uh, for example. You know, that's quite nice. Oh, that oh yeah, that one's really nice. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so you see how you can very quickly get um, get kind of lost in that. But uh, but it's all good stuff. But I think once you've got a nice, simple, slick solution, um, show it to someone else that like got some feedback from Ian uh, and they like it as well, then then you're probably good to go. Yeah, like that. I, I do. What you just said, getting lost, I do that. I do fanny around, yeah. try a different style. And what I'll quite often do, I'll, I'll remember a spreadsheet I've seen of somebody else's, and I think, oh, that chart looks really nice. And I'll try and recall it and try and recreate it. I never end up getting there. Shirt green, that is. That made me laugh, Snipper Shop. That was good. Yeah, it is. It is exactly the colour of your it shirt. Is, yeah, yeah, it is, yeah. I think you did some Darren Brown stuff on there. Yeah, a little bit of, yeah. little bit of psychosomatics going on there. Yeah. Um, and Nick's asked, is the ELO rating for each competition? Uh, would Yes, it is. So we have we have it for 11 leagues. It only works on teams in that league. That's what it looks at. Um, it, I think it just becomes an absolute mess trying to include Arsenal playing Bayern. Well, no, who are they playing? Kravina, Shaveda, some Scrabble team in that Europa League they're in, trying to equate that into Arsenal's results. So everything I do is league specific. Yeah. And Dave says the plus icon. What's the plus icon got? The plus icon. Yeah, that's not something I use, Dave, but I think this is a good shout just looking at it. So Dave's saying, yeah, the plus icon on the right chart gives you some good options. So if you click on the chart, you're going to get this plus icon. And I've, oh, Dave, Dave, a man after my own heart. Here you go. Okay. So you can click here and this gives you all of the things you might want. One final thing, guys data labels. I'm just going to click data labels there. Uh, data labels now these would need a bit of tweaking clearly but they tell you they tell you the values as, as you go so you can see this one is about 2.86 um yeah so so you might want to put those data labels in as well this one i probably wouldn't uh but if you've only got one line on your chart then a bit like our example if we've only got one line then those data labels can work uh really nicely good shout that dave so click on it and then the plus and this gives you all of the options cheeky trend line as well if you want um should be interesting cheeky. yeah everything's cheeky yes it is it is the cheeky restart but um <laughs> yeah you can see how yeah you can get a bit lost with this so uh yeah by all means yeah get get lost a couple of times but then at some point you've got to say it, it's the old rule isn't it you create 80 percent of the value in 20 percent of the time and then for the rest of the time you're just going up in like really really small increments um good okay any final yeah. questions today then, guys? Can't see any final questions. I think, I think we've got a show there. So, yeah, today's fixtures, that's yeah. that's going to be a banger, isn't it, as I said, Chris? Yeah, no, that's the, I mean, it is the game of the day. That's it. It'll be, can Belgium get themselves out of a hole? I'm not so sure. But, um, yeah, that's it. Might have a little little look at that. Okay. Okay, final question here we got from Bra. Brahma is in. Welcome, my friend. Uh, if you bet using Poisson, would you give the leagues time to get up and running once the World Cup finishes, like you would the start of the season? Um, mm. well, I mean, it. I mean, this is a really unusual circumstance, and we've got to remember this World Cup was still when it was awarded was still meant to be played in the summer. They've shifted it to mess the whole football season up. Um, We've obviously got data. So we've got Arsenal have played 15, 16 games and that data is in the bank. 
the unknown for all of us who bet. And this really then is just a decision that you say, I'm going to wait and see what happens is when it starts up, are those teams going to start up as they finished whatever it was now, three weeks ago? I can't answer that because none of us has seen this situation ever in our lives. It's never, mm. ever happened before. Hopefully it never, ever, pardon me, hopefully it never happens again. But I've no idea. So I, I always advise caution. I mean, I will just do what I do. But if people are nervous, I'd always say, have a bit of caution, see what happens. But I'm fully expecting it to, to hopefully get going as it should. I think we might start to see teams getting tired come March, April, because they've just been playing so many mm. fixtures. But yeah. Um, yeah, it, it is an unknown, bro. I just can't go and say I wouldn't bet because I'm going to carry on as normal and hope that things pan out. But there is that risk that they don't because we've not seen this. Nice. Yeah, very good. And final thought for the day from Dave. Yeah, there's many ways to do the same thing in Excel, many ways to do football training as well. So, yeah, for me, it's always a case of understanding what's the options available, understanding the pros and cons, and then finding a way that works for you. Brilliant. Very good. Okay, then, go guys. Make some, go and make some charts, guys. Let's do it. Go get charting, and we'll be yeah. back same time, same place tomorrow, 9 o'clock, World Cup Daily Spreadsheet Show. We'll see you then, guys. Take care. Cheers. Bye.